Hello everybody, Sunday Adelaide here. Uh, okay, who are we going to welcome first today? Okay, we have, who is the first person to greet us? I have a few of you coming on, but who are we greeting first? Okay, we have Toyi. How are you, Toyi? Nice to see you. Samuel, Samuel, how do you welcome? Mary, Rame, Orenoga, Joshua, welcome. Regina, is it Regina or Regina? Regina, Grace, Favor, Nero. Please go and invite your friends, everybody. Today is going to be a very challenging, very, very challenging topic. To, to handle this topic, you've got to be a thinker and a genius. <laughs> I've had a lot of people listen to uh, the thinking series, but nobody has come volunteer yes to <laughs> to discuss it live. <laughs> but today we have one of the most brilliant minds from our country, from Nigeria, who has taken it upon himself to take on the challenge, to take on the thinking, thinking series, which is a very challenging series. It's a challenging series. Uh, you know, I, it took me how many years? Since 2000 and between 2007 to 2016. How many years is that? Eight years? 2007 or six years? 2007 to 2016, nine years, yeah, 2007 to 2016, nine years, yeah, nine years, nine years, okay, so it took me nine years to develop that teaching, nine years to develop the teaching on, th on thinking, so for somebody now to come and, you know, relate it and, uh, you know, do the this only one and a half hours. <laughs> that is a challenge right there. So, so that I understand the people who have not, you know, been bold enough to take on this thinking. I mean, on the thinking series, on this uh, series, the art of thinking. But it's it's a very important uh, series if we are going to move Africa forward. I think without it, we cannot build a new Africa. But we have Osaro here. Osaro, hey. You are going to be handling, I mean, this is in Osaro, everybody. This is the Osaro that has been calling, no? <laughs> you know, he has a smart, he has a brilliant mind. So, uh, he's going to have, have to carry the load upon himself <laughs> for this thinking series. What do you think about that thing? What were the first thoughts that came to you, Osaro? Uh, they say you have a good smile. They are all falling in love with your smile. <laughs> With your teeth, <laughs> that's the first thing everybody notices. <laughs> they are commenting on your teeth or your smile. So, what the, what was the first thing that came the first week or the first few days of you listening to that teaching? What were your first uh, thinking? Well, the first one of the first things that came to my mind is uh, while I was listening, I said. Uh, DSA is so intense. You are a very intense person. And as I listen to this series, I begin to understand why. And um, the teaching looks very intimidating because it, it, it challenges you to go deep inside of you. And most times as human beings, we don't like to do that. We are always afraid to do that. So a lot of times we rather just uh, 
hide our head in the sun and hope that everything will be fine. But there is no way you can listen to a teaching like this and you will not feel dragged to think of deep stuff that would literally bring pain to your head. It is a very, very deep series. It's a very, uh, it's, it's very challenging. And the way you give the point, there's just so much point that you have to concentrate on. So that makes it very intimidating. But the points are so necessary that even though you feel intimidated, you also know that it is something you have to address. So it, it, it makes you search your soul, which is basically the, the seat of our intellect. It makes you go down there and, and, and really look at things. It makes you develop perspective. So these are challenges that ordinarily the average human being, especially the average Nigerian, we, we just uh, you know, run away from, whether knowingly or unknowingly. Another thing that came to my mind is uh, for you to take the time to do this. Because when I was listening, I, you know, I could see um, the difficulty that is involved in, you know, you know, in pouring all these things out. For you to take the time to do this, it, 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 it must have, it, it, it is because there is something you are going after. Because you have a, a, a goal that you are going after. And I can also sense that there is also a worry, there is also an apprehension in you that you hope people will listen, that you hope people will get this. Those were the thoughts coming to my mind. And what do you think? Is it is it worth it? Anybody is going to value this ever? Is it ever going to be acknowledged, valued? I want to help my people. I see that Africans are so much behind. And our biggest <clears> problem, <throat> why we are behind, is that we don't think. That's my conclusion. We are not thinking. We are thinking only on survival only on the periphery things. And I thought I should really make our people critical thinkers because any society, any civilization, any education is built on thinking and questioning. So, but even up to we are talking now, I'm still not sure. Will my people hear? Will my people listen? Will it benefit? Will it be worth it? I've done my own part, but I don't know Will anybody even notice it? You know, I am sure that there are people that have listened to this and that are getting it. I'm very sure. So I don't think that this will be in vain. I don't think so. It will take a lot of people a lot of time to come to this perspective to even try to venture into this level of analytical thinking that there are people I for one I, 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 you know I've not really finished it that's how much it is but I for one I'm blessed by it I have been challenged. I am a Nigerian and it has added to my level of understanding. It has challenged some things in my life that I myself am looking at. So it, 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 it's going to help me. And I, and I believe it's going to, because if it does help me, then it's going to help someone else out there too. Then from what I've learned, 
then I can help others too. So I know that the apprehension is there, whether it is worth it. I think it is. I think it is. And I, and I, you know, and I want to say thank you for doing it because, like you just said, you said, you know, you know, you 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 you, you were saying that it took you nine years to develop this teaching. Now I understand. Usually, I am a very um, quick to grab stuff. That is just the way my brain is. That is, that, that is how I've been able. I believe is part of. What, who God made me to be, then I've also worked hard in some aspect to develop my setup. But with this teaching, you know, every time I was listening to it, I can't go fast. <laughs> because, and I realized that there is no way I can go fast in a few days and learn what it took you nine years to develop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you are a very smart person. You are a very brilliant person. So if 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 it took you nine years to develop this, it, that means I even I still have to go back. And 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 I, and I already knew that. Even while I was listening to it, and making notes and cross referencing. One thing with me is when someone is teaching, when I'm listening to teaching, as I listen, scriptures jump out to me. It is my way, you know. You you know you talked talk about questioning things that I basically question everything. Like I I I have I have this dislike for status quo, like because it has been like this, everything has to be like that. It, it sort of makes me creepy. I don't like it. So when I listen to teachings, when I listen to people. I try to use scripture to think about what is going on. What am I hearing? What is this saying? So when I was listening to this, your teaching, as I'm doing that, I also realized that there is just so much embedded in what you are saying that it took me so much time if I'm listening to a topic. At times it takes me the whole day. A lot of times I have to pause it. At times I pause just to think on it and verify the scripture that is coming into my heart. So it is, it is, it is a very condensed, intense teaching. It is very, very. It is. So when I, you know, so when I was listening, so it took me a long time. So that is what I'm just halfway. <laughs> I'm halfway. Why? Because there's so much there. So I still have to go back again to look into it again. Then, until I can make it my home. Yeah. It is, I, I can't still say this is my home yet. It is what the Lord has inspired you to develop for a time like this. Now, I have taken it to learn from it. I, what took you nine years to develop? I cannot, there's no way I can learn it in a short time. It's going to take me some years to, to dig into it and make it mine. Because for me to make it mine, I have to be able to relate with it with my mind and I'll be able to assimilate it and be able to judge based on the information already have concerning the word of God so that I can digest it. Then the Holy Spirit can make me own it and make it mine so that I can push it to other people too. So hence I believe that this teaching may take some time to go deep down here to people, but DSA, I do believe that people that really care for accomplishing the purpose of God in their life, the purpose for which God has created them, and people that care 
those of us that are Nigerians that care for Nigeria, they will take it and it's going to make an impact. It will. Because the truth is this, you don't find teachings like this out there. It's going to make an impact. That is, I actually is. had to stop, you know, that was just half of everything that is there is only half of the material. I still have the second wow. half that I just left because I just thought, no, it's enough now for people. This one that is there, let people digest this part first. Then I have the second half, which is about the same quantity. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that so, is a lot. Yeah. So what are you thinking? Uh, what are the lessons that you have brought out of this series in your own words? Or in your own understanding, the way help me relate it to people who are watching today and who wow. will watch in the future, the main things people should focus on and the lessons one by one. If you have your note, please just to relate to us how I you have it. Yes. Okay, yes, please. You know, the the way you started the teaching, you know, on thinking, you know, you used, you know a word when you were talking about learning the heart of thinking you use the word from psalm psalm 42 deep calls unto deep you know i remember some years back you know when i was still in school i if i take time off from studying the word or taking time to seclude myself to study after a while, maybe I'm busy with school activities or all that stuff. I start feeling, I start feeling, uh, I start feeling like I'm losing. I start feeling sad. I am not in my element. I start making mistakes. So I remember one day I'm with my friends and. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is because when you use that deep cause onto deep, um, um, you know, it brought that time back to me. It gave me another layer <laughs> of understanding <laughs> of what it means to go deep and use our God-given mind in accomplishing the purpose for which we were created. Deep call it onto the that day I was with my friends and we joking around, we were playing around all of a sudden. I felt this emptiness come upon me. And my friends are like, What's going on? I sat down there, I kept quiet out. They said, What's wrong? I said, Just just leave me. I sat down there. As I'm sitting down there, and the Lord is speaking to my to my heart. I want you to come deeper. I want you to come deeper. I want you to come deeper. Then that scripture came to my heart, Psalm 42. As the deer, as the heart pants for the water brooks, so my soul longs after you. Oh my God, when will I come? I said, this is why, this is why I have not been going the way I should go to him. Then I took up that, I opened my Bible, I started reading it, I started tears. My friends are like, look, what is wrong? You all of a sudden you brought it, you cry. Tears coming out from my eyes. Then I reached that place. He said, Deep call it unto deep. At the sound of that water spout, that waves and billow rose over me. I said, Wow. Wow. So when you said that word, as you are teaching it and beginning to understand the more. The death of God is calling to our death. Our death, our very essence of intelligence that God placed there, what makes us human, so that we can use it in relating with our environment, with the consciousness of God. As you are teaching, as I'm listening to it, and I look at it, he said, he said, at the sound of the water spout. What is a water spout? Why would David use that word water spout? People that understand weather, 
you see the water spout is, is a natural phenomenon, very beautiful, very unique. It's like a tornado, but it happens in the water. It's a phenomenon that the cloud, the waters in the cloud, create a funnel-like twist that goes like a tornado to connect with the water in the city. And it just goes like that. David is saying, at the sound of that water spout, the depth of God reaches down to the depth of us here. And when they study water spout, they found out that the water inside the spout, they thought it would be seawater. But the water inside is actually not seawater. Connected. Hmm. It is the one coming from the cloud. The, the sound of the water spout, the waves and billows rose over me. So you ask, you see, God is reaching to us. He wants to bring out the deepest of us. And how does that happen? We use our mind. We use our mind. The software God has placed there. Our mind is like a software. Yeah. That is why you cannot quantify it in the laboratory. You see, when you take a floppy disk or a CD, you load it with software. Before you load it, wait. After you load it with software, the weight doesn't change. It transcends the physical. So, God wants to trigger those things he has placed in us so that we can be who he wants us to be. But a lot of times, we are so engrossed in superficiality. So that is how I, I said, wow, this is great. And, and, and you went further, you talk about the fact that we are intelligent beings that God has created. The reason he's created us this way is so that we can use our mind. And that's why he made us free moral agents so that we can make decisions based on information. But unfortunately, a lot of people are not doing that. We, we, many of us have made the mistake of not doing that. So we just live our life based on assumption, without questioning, without developing a concept or idea, without digging for the information so that we can arouse the depth of our intellectual ability and our thinking ability, which, by the way, is what God used through us to relate with the world. <laughs> and this is why when David said, my soul longs after thee, how do we separate our soul from our mind? and eventually from our, our brain that we use to express what our mind is telling us to the physical world. So God wants to relate with us on a deep thinking level, but in a place where I am from, where we are from, where we don't pay attention to this, we lose our big time. We lose our big time. We either mystify everything or we assume everything. Then we end up lacking the true knowledge that we are supposed to have. And we know what happens with that. The Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. So we see how all this is so important. So when I'm listening, these are the things I'm learning, I'm grabbing. And we see how the Bible makes use of the word mind every time. Can we think about thinking without mind? It's impossible. The Bible is full of mind. Mind. The Bible speaking about, I, 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 you know, he said, he said, he said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice unto God. So that which is your what? Your what? Your reasonable, reasonable service. Reasonable means your rational, intellectual service. 
your mind has to play. We cannot worship God without our mind. Our mind is the link with our inner man, the spirit. So if we say we are worshiping God, we cannot worship God without our mind. Why? We become zombies. In fact, you cannot express love without your mind. That is why God makes us made us free, moral, agent, so that we can use exercise our mind to make a decision whether we will love him or not, because love cannot be demanded. We have to be the one to make the decision. So we see that our mind is so important. So thinking, using our mind, is so important because if we don't use it, then we completely fail the reason for which we are created because without that, we cannot attain it. We cannot attain it. That's why Paul was speaking. Paul said, if I speak with tongues, I will also speak with understanding. <laughs> Because if you don't speak with understanding, then you become of no use to your environment. But people are, right, no people are writing right now in the comment that pastors in Nigeria say you shouldn't use your mind, that this is the opposite. This is conflicting with what people have been taught in church. That, you know, it's a spiritual thing. You are not spiritual if you are going to be using your mind. Okay. I will quote that place again. Romans chapter 12. From verse 1. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is what your reasonable service. The word reasonable. What, what, where does that come from? Reason. The only way you reason is through your mind. Which is your rational and intelligent service <laughs> so that you may prove what is good, what is perfect, and what is the acceptable will of God. Then be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. You cannot do without mind. If it wasn't needed, God will not put it there. So what where, then, 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 what, what, where are the Nigerian pastors coming from to say, don't you are not spiritual, these are spiritual things, the, you cannot understand the spirit things? They are very wrong. The place they are coming from, if, you, if they are looking at it like that, is number one, very unbiblical. liquor. Then number two is because they, they are afraid of being questioned. Okay. You see, because they want to dominate over the people. So you worry about people that will question you. If you notice, if you are a very intelligent person that is focused on loving God, and you are doing your study, when you are around those pastors, they feel very uncomfortable around you. <laughs> I've experienced it. They feel intimidated. Why? Because they know they cannot manipulate you. Because they know they cannot I mean, I mean, deceive you to do what they want you to do to glorify themselves or achieve your own personal goal that may not have anything to do with your own calling in life at all. Hmm. So this is the problem. So when somebody is preaching to you that you shouldn't use your mind, look at Jesus. Jesus wants us to use our mind. How many of us remember the, 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 the journey of the disciples from Emmaus after Jesus was crucified? As they are going, Jesus came in their midst. They did not know he was the one. But how did he start? He asked them, he said, what is it that you guys are just discussing about? Then they ask him. You see, he's, he's pushing their mind. Then they ask him. How can you be around this area? You don't know what is going on that about this Jesus that was crucified. Then what did he go for that? Then what did he do? He started telling them, don't you remember? Don't you remember? How do you remember stuff? You call to mind. You go deep down, you call to mind. 
the Holy Spirit will not work without our mind. The Holy Spirit will not work without our mind. That's why I can't the Bible. The Bible says, let the spirit of your mind. Jesus, everything Jesus did on earth was with his mind. Look at it. The Bible said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2. So he had a mindset. How do we develop a mindset? From thinking in certain perspective. From developing a certain ideology. Because of the information you surrounded yourself with. That is how we develop the mindset. A continuous thinking on a perspective as a result of the information that you are exposed to build a mindset in you. So that is what DSA is trying to do. I mean, trying to do, to shift the mindset of people from the way we've been made to think because of the wrong teachings and wrong ideology and wrong information that has been presented to us. So for somebody to say that being spiritual, you don't need your mind. I don't, you know, it is one of the most uh, senseless things to say. It is completely unscriptural. Look at what God says. How about we, DSA says something too, when you go to the part of queer, queer questioning. Hopefully we'll have the time to get there. You said, we notice noticed that Jesus was always questioning. Don't you understand? And do you know yet understanding? Can't you see what I'm saying? I want you to get it yet. God questions a lot. God doesn't only question, he also invites us to question. The quotation that everybody quotes a lot, Matthew 7, chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. You see, people relate to it only from the perspective of asking for physical things. It is way, brother, brother, that when Jesus say, ask, the most powerful one of all those things is to ask to get knowledge, to get the right information, which we can use to relate with our world, so that we can be more like Jesus. It is way more than asking for food, asking for healing, asking for provision. It is, it is, those are the little, little ones of it. Ask, it shall be given. God is telling us to ask questions about things we don't know. He's telling us to seek, to have insight. Seek and you shall find. Seek to have insight into concept. And relationship. He said, no, and the door, the door of wisdom and understanding. Without knowledge, we are lost. Truth, if you read, if you look at the scripture over and over again, it is only through the knowledge of Jesus Christ that is in us that we can do things according to the will of God. If you look at Genesis, in Genesis chapter, I think chapter 18, where God went to meet with Abraham, God was dealing with Abraham on questions, mainly. It's so interesting. Where is your wife, Sarah? Where is your, he's asking Abraham questions. Is it that God don't know where the wife is? God is only but why is he asking? Because he wants you to locate yourself. He wants you to go deep. That's why he has questions. He asks Adam, where are you? Is it that God doesn't know where Adam is? Where are you? Then he asks him, who told you you were naked? <laughs> is it that God didn't know? He's making you go deep to relate with what has just happened to him. 
have you eaten of the fruit that I told you not to eat? Is it that God didn't know? He's making him go deep into himself to find out what was going on and what just happened to him. Why did he do what he just did? God has questions and he wants us. He says, I say, come now, let us reason to, together. Let us reason together. Why? Because his thought is higher than our thought. So for us to partake of that thought, for our death to answer the call from his death, hmm. for the noise of his water spout and the billows of the waves to flow over us, he asks us questions. And he wants us to ask him too. And how do we do this? Through thinking. Through thinking on his word. Through meditating on his word. That is why the longest chapter in the Bible, the longest book in the Bible, is dedicated to the word. Psalm 119. The verses is up to 176 verses. Every single verse is about the word. Meditating on it. Relating to it. Accepting it. Having respect unto it. So that when DSA, when you go to that point, um, you were talking about um, why is it that people are shallow? Because if you don't think deep, you become shallow. Shallow mindedness. Which is a huge problem in the world we live in today. Yeah. More specifically, in Nigeria. I learned a lot from them. I learned a lot. You said something. You see, I never looked at it that way. You said the reason for shallow mindedness is as a result of our attitude towards words. You know, I never really quite related it that way. I, already, I knew that words were important. But I never really linked it that way. Shallow mindedness. If we don't think, if we don't go into deep thinking, we become shallow minded. And the reason is this when we hear words, or when we say words, we don't give it enough depth of attention. We don't. And if, that's, if you look at the Bible, as I, you know, when I was listening to, to this, as I'm looking through the scripture, I begin to understand more. The Bible always calls us to pay attention to words. To words. If the words you speak to yourself, the words other people are saying, the word that is related, that you know, that is given in the scripture, every time we are told to pay attention to words. I now realize why God did not like Esau. What happened between Esau and Jacob? Esau was the firstborn. Jacob was next to Esau. They had a covenant with God in the family. How did they, how did Jacob get to know about that? Because they were told. Words they were told, they were told. Jacob paid attention to it and desired to plug into it, even though he went about it the wrong way. But he kept it in his hand. But Esau, when Jacob said, I will give you this porridge if you sell me your birthright, <laughs> Esau said, What is this birthright to me? Who cares? He never really thought deep about the importance of him being the senior. People like that, the Bible called them a name. Profane. Profane. That is somebody that doesn't pay attention. 
to things that are important. The Bible said Esau, in, 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 in the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 12, he said, don't be profane like Esau, who for a morsel of meat sold his birthright. You see what he did? He sold his birthright because he did not pay attention to the depth of importance that was attached to that birthright, which was the information that was given to them concerning the covenant. But Jacob, is a thing to be desired. He, 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 he kept it. So when the opportunity came, he used it. He used it. So a man that doesn't pay attention to words, a man that doesn't think deep on words, is a profane person. The Bible said, we see later how he sought after it with tears, and yet he could not get it. This is where we have to be. This is, this, this is the one that scares, scares me. I mean, this is the one that really worries me. What decision have I made? What things have I said or done through shallow-mindedness that I may never be able to revert again in my life? Think deep, that take words, that take information and, and ruminate on them until they hone it, especially when it comes to things that are important. Those are people of integrity. It increases your integrity. So when you speak, the value you give to that word. The value you give to the world. The, when you hear what the value you give to it, when you relate, it makes you it makes you depend, it makes you a dependable person, both from the perspective of man and the perspective of God. So when God wants to do things, he would rather do it for you because he knows if you say yes, you mean yes. <laughs> Integrity. People that don't tell that is why I comment. I've always hated, I don't like comedians. I don't like it. So when I started seeing them doing it in the churches in, in, in Nigeria, I just said, what kind of stupidity is this? How low are we going to get? How low? Profane. 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 That is profanity. Why? Because God is a king. You don't go in the presence of a king and make jokes. Proverbs said it. He said, be careful what you say in the presence of the king. We are always in his presence. So we don't just joke. I'm not saying you cannot, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you cannot be relaxed. And no. But what I'm saying is this. Don't purposely go out to go and look for stuff that will make you shallow when you are not done your work of going in debt. But this is where we have come to in the churches in Nigeria. Yeah? And that is why the country is like that. So hence I believe that this teaching, a teaching like this, if every Nigerian will really take it seriously and begin to get serious, <laughs> talking about serious. People always say that I'm too serious. They say I'm too serious. But the reason they say that is, at times when you bring them to a subject matter so that you can do some serious, cogent talk that will make them think and reason, they, they are afraid of it. <laughs> they will say you are too uptight. For me, I better be uptight than to be down loose. <laughs> because if you are down loose, you are gone. Everybody will come and just play on you. They will deceive you. They will take your money. They will destroy your home just to advance themselves. This is what is going on in Nigeria. 
Hence, it is important that we live shallow mindedness, that we dig deep into our debt and open up to the debt of God. We take information seriously. We take words seriously. Let me quickly say something here about how Jesus demonstrated integrity of words. We remember the story of Lazarus in John chapter 11. In John chapter 11, they sent a message to Jesus that Lazarus was sick. When they sent a message to Jesus, the first thing Jesus said, the very first thing he said, it, it took me many, many years. Now that you were teaching this thing again, I now remember that place again. He said, this sickness is not unto death. He, he just said it. So later, he knew that Lazarus had died. And he told the disciples, let's go meet Lazarus because he is asleep. The disciples said, well, if he's asleep, then he's fine. He said, well, because they don't understand, he said, well, he's dead. Let, let's go, go meet him. So they went. When they got there, the Bible said that Jesus, how did Jesus bring Lazarus back from the, from the dead? Did Jesus pray? That is the question. Did he pray? Study that place anyway. He did not pray. The Bible said, he lifted up his head and said, Father, thank you, because I know you always hear me. And then he said, Lazarus, comfort. He did not pray. Hear what? What did he say that God heard? What he said right from the beginning, this sickness is not unto death. That is how much important Jesus gave to his words. As far as he was concerned, he already said it, God has already heard it. He didn't need to talk about it anymore. This is how God wants us to be integrity. When we are people of integrity, we take words seriously, we think on words. You will do joy, you will do it. DSA. Maybe I will stop. I will let you ask me some more questions so that I can I, I will I will follow your, your lead. Okay. I want to tell people who are just joining that what we are doing right now is reviewing the thinking series or the art of thinking series that uh, we have on YouTube. It's one of the series on YouTube. I, I think it's series number 14. Series number 14, the thinking series on YouTube. And um uh, so we are reviewing it now and I also want to let you know that I've written one book on thinking I've never announced it because I was waiting but the book, if you pay attention very well for those of you who are detailed you will see it among the books it's called Get Rid Yourself of Shallow Mindedness and I'm so happy because it's touching a lot of the things that have been touched in that book I touched just a little in this teaching but greater, more in that book on shallow-mindedness. But it's about thinking. Read yourself of shallow-mindedness. So <clears throat> it's on YouTube. I mean, it's on uh, Amazon. You can read it for free because when you listen to me, it's one thing. But people who have read my book, they said it's even much more better to read what I write than to even listen. So if you want to really learn how to think, go and look for that book. Read yourself of shallow-mindedness. Now, the question I would like to also ask uh, Osaro on this uh, series on thinking is, you know, I, you know, I like the way you are, you are underlining uh, the important aspect of it because thinking and word and everything. So because your ability to pay attention to words determines your integrity. And once you are one, your oneness with the word is what makes you to manifest. And, you know, that's why Jesus could just come and speak the word. Because you, he has become the word. So the word has become his essence. Now that the word has become his essence, he doesn't need to pray. He just needs to release his essence. Anything that becomes your essence comes into manifestation. 
That's why I said the word became flesh. So once the word can become flesh in you, you manifest. That's the next level. You just begin to manifest. Now, so, there are still a few things I know that uh, Osaro can say about the sh shadow-mindedness, but I will probably tell him now to go into looking at the points one by one. After the shadow-mindedness, then I began to talk about the uh, benefits of analytical thinking before I went into the principles mm -hmm. of analytical thinking. But also I spoke about the dangers of analytical thinking. Mm -hmm. So any of those, you can just, yeah. uh, yes. Yeah. So you spoke about uh, the dangers of shallow madness, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like I was saying, not to think is not a question. Hmm. Not a question is not to seek info information hmm. or data or evidence. Not to seek those information is not to challenge any viewpoint. Yeah. Not to challenge any viewpoint or develop a viewpoint based on the information you already have. <laughs> it's to be left back in history, eh? <laughs> it's to be left back, that is it. So all this ultimately lead to a point where you don't even know your purpose or your reason for living. So that is dangerous because you are just shallow. You just live in it like that. Yes, we were using the word biomass. Uh, some people that I know that are spoken with concerning, you know, there's a guy, he used the word oxygen thieves. Hmm. He said he just came to the world to steal the oxygen. <laughs> so you don't want to be like that. Because God placed us here for a purpose. But when we are shallow-minded and we don't think deep, we lose out completely. Number one, you will be deceived. If we look at the scripture, the scripture warns us so much about deception in life. And if you look at, I'll be using Nigeria as an example because that is our point of focus. If you look at the church in Nigeria, deception is the order of the day. Because most people are shallow minded. Now, when we are deceived, that means we'll be led in the wrong direction. The hand of source direction is always destruction. Mm. So our life here is destroyed. Then another danger is this. When you are deceived, you tend to deceive any other person that looks up to you. Then we completely lose out in innovation because we are not using our mind. In development. Because we are not using our mind. Because we are, how did God create us as human beings? The Bible said that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God created everybody specifically. God already showed that in nature. In nature, in that no snowflakes are identical. Every time you take a snowflake, you look it under the microscope, there must be some different in the crystallization pattern. That 
is how diversified God is. That is how great God is in terms of diversity. So every human being is created uniquely for a unique purpose. So if you are shallow-minded, you can never find out what we are created. So you will spend your life pursuing other people's agenda that are controlling you. So you lose up, you pursue other people's agenda, you miss your own purpose in life, and you deceive others that are listening to you. There is no innovation. There is no development. There is no progress. And ultimately, you can end up in hell. This thing is so serious, dear say. It's so serious. Shallow mindedness has caused a lot of trouble. You mentioned marriage. People just assume that everybody has to marry. <laughs> that is shallow mindedness. Immediately I got married. Or even before I got, got, got married, when I'm discussing my father, I'll say, Paul was a smart man. She said, stop talking like that. Now, why are you talking like that? I said, because he didn't marry, he was a smart man. She's like, no, don't talk like that. Are you saying you don't want to marry now? I'm like, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying that he knew he didn't have to. He knew it was not part of the purpose of his life. So the prevailing mindset of humanity did not affect his decision. Because it was a deep thing. So a lot of people have gotten married and have created problems. Maybe they were not supposed to get married. So hence, when people cannot find a partner to get married to, they start running etta skater. Now, let's look at that marriage in shallow mindedness, one of the biggest problems we have. What did the Bible say about marriage? In the book of Proverbs, it said, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor of the Lord. He who finds, he did not say everybody must find a wife. Or he did not say it is given to everyone to be able to find a wife. He who finds that means not everybody. So if marriage is a sign that you succeeded in life, are you trying to tell me that Apostle Paul did not succeed? <laughs> so this is the thinking that we have to think and look at the words that are pay attention to words. He says, anyone who finds a wife, he did not say everybody should find a wife. He that find it. He that find it. Maybe it's not given to you to find that, but there are some other great things you can find that will enhance your life to make you achieve the purpose of God for your life. Another one is having children. You use that too. A lot of people have never sat down to think about why should I even have children? Am I supposed to have children? What is my plan towards having children? For what purpose is my, is my having children? In the Bible, in Malachi chapter 2, Malachi chapter 2, God gave us the purpose why we produce children. In Malachi chapter 2, from verse 14 to 16, we can check, check it out. God explained the reason we have children. Shallow manliness will make you create candidate for hair. We have to, this is so important. If you have children and you cannot raise them up, 
in the mindset of Christ. You, if you fail in that, you just created candidate for hell. You just populated hell. <laughs> Let's think about that. If God said, the, when God was speaking about the fact that he hates putting away wife, people just divorcing unnecessary. That's what they were doing then in Israel. And God was complaining. And this is actually where they link to Malachi 3 that they are saying as tight. In fact, if you read everything from, from chapter 1, chapter 2, you begin to understand that the tide they are preaching in the churches in, in, in Nigeria is not what the Bible is talking about. <laughs> anyway, I will just leave the tight. God said, Why did I make you to have covenant with a woman? To have a wife? Is it not that I want you to become one? So that you can raise up seed for me? You see that? So, if you want to have children, first and foremost, you have to be able to make sure you raise them up in the fear of God, so that after their journey on earth, they will go to God. So, if anybody here now looking for children, you're running elter skelter. Have you thought of that yet? The shallow mindedness will not make you think of that. Shallow mindedness will make you think of what people think about me. Ha, I have to meet up. Every, in my family, no one is barren. I don't want to be the only one barren. So you see, the standard you are using because of shallow mindedness is completely off. It is skewed. So shallow mindedness will make you create candidates for hell if you are not careful. So the reason we have children is to populate heaven. First and foremost. So if you know you cannot raise, you don't have the resources to take, you don't have the way we talk. In fact, it is better not to have children. Imagine, you think about it. Why would you have a child and the child eventually ends up in hell because you cannot raise the child well? And at times, when you talk like this, people will say, ah, you're so hard, you're so... You, you're so serious. You're so, no, it is serious. I have two children. Imagine what it would be like if I fail to raise them well such that they love the Lord. Then I'm in heaven, they are not there. Hmm. Your own product. And for you to know, it's not, it's not everybody that is created to our children. The place I quoted in that Proverbs, it said, children are a blessing from the Lord. The gift of the womb and heritage from the Lord. Then he said, blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. He did not say everybody's quiver is full of them. So let's first our mind, instead of running after shallow things like this, and rather develop ourselves in deep things. So these are some of the dangers of shallow mind of what it can create. Generational problem is it's 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 another one. Generational problem. This is what is affecting us in Nigeria. We have a lot of generational problem. I'm not talking in terms of generational causes. That doesn't mean it's what. The one I'm talking about here is mindset and ideology, presumptions that have been passed over to us by our culture, by our heritage, that we have not questioned, that we have not thought about. that we just take as absolute and begin to run with, and we end up having problems, then we pass it on to our chick -chick children. And one of it is what we are just talk talk talking about. In terms of marriage, you must marry. You must have children. So that's an argument of shallow mindedness. We will have shallow mindedness, you will create a generational problem. Why? Because the children you raise, the people you lead, 
we emulate those wrong things. <laughs> then shallow mindedness, another big problem of shallow mindedness is it makes you incompetent in almost anything you do. This is a big problem. Take, for example, architecture. Every time I go back to Nigeria, when I look at the houses, even my house in Nigeria, when I went there, after they finished building it, I look at it, I said, oh my God, this is rubbish. Rubbish. The leveling is off. The finishing is off. We don't pay attention <laughs> to perfection. We don't understand the meaning of sustainable maintenance. We don't think far and deep. And the reason is because we don't have knowledge. Shallow mindedness will spoil your innovative ability. It will spoil your ability to attain perfection. Why? Because you don't dig deep into things to get knowledge that will make you improve those aspects of your life. What is this knowledge? I was thinking about this. But what is this knowledge? Even this is why it's paying attention to the word itself, knowledge. Let's break it down. Knowledge to know, know, K N O W. Then ledge. What is a ledge? A ledge is an extension of a cliff that you can stand on outside of the cliff itself so that you can see what is in the bottom. You see, when someone is standing at the edge of a cliff, he cannot have your perspective as when you can walk off that cliff on a ledge so you can see what is at the bottom of the cliff. That is the advantage you get when you get no ledge. You can see deep, you can see far. So when you begin to see the consumer, so you can relate with things better and you can make better plans, you can make, you know, you, you, you become more objective in the way you do things. So you can strive towards perfection. The shallow man and less kills all this. So that is why in Nigeria up to today, we don't innovate in relating with life. So these are just some of the uh, notes I made concerning the dangers of shallow mindedness. Okay, it's like we had a problem there. Eh? I think we are back now. Okay, we just had a small, a slight. Sorry, guys, we just had a slight break there for about two seconds, but we are back now. Everything is okay. So we welcome you back. Uh, but uh, these things are. <laughs> uh, let me ask you a more practical question. Yes, sir. What can, if we, popul if we, if we popularize thinking and if we succeed in getting this to our colleges, to our high schools, to our universities, and if we manage, I don't know how it's going to happen now, but if, we, if God will help us to manage to make all our school systems Learn the art of thinking like this. If we could make our families begin to think, our churches begin to think, to abide by these principles, what would this do to Nigeria? What are the benefits, advantages of analytical or deep thinking? In, in the terms of how a nation runs, the advantages cannot be overemphasized. 
Now, if we study the book of Daniel, if you notice what Babylon was doing, they were doing a kind of brain drain. When they invaded Israel, and the two people were captive, yeah. they, went, they went after the brains. That is where they picked Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel, Azariah, uh, Ananiah, and, uh, Ami, and, uh, uh, and Mishaiah. We just called them uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That was the yeah. name they gave to two there. Over there, yeah. Over there. You see, this is why they ruled the world <laughs> at that time. At that time, they were organized. You see, analytical thinking makes you live operating in the realms of emotion and external stimuli. It takes you to a place where you operate objectively based on verifiable information and evidence. And there is, you know, people, so, 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 so you probably be thinking, you, you, when you hear the word objective, you hear verifiable, you hear intelligent, they may think, oh, this is not spiritual. No, it is very, very spiritual. <laughs> it is very, very spiritual. In fact, in fact, spirituality is very, very verifiable. That is why Jesus said, by their fruit, you shall know them. The fruits are measurable. They are verifiable. Discipline is measurable. It is verifiable. Long suffering is measurable. It is verifiable. Gentleness, meekness is measurable. It is verifiable. So, if we put this in, you see, you know, I told you before we start started. I said, this is like a semester course. It's, it, it is actually like a course that can be introduced into the educational system. The principles of analytical thinking. Apart from the fact that it helps you to communicate, it also helps to be objective in seeking information. Then in rationalizing the information before you arrive at a conclusion, <laughs> in drawing inference that will help you to apply those information you have gathered in creating a desired result. So then why will you, so all the sentiments, because Nigeria now is being ruled by sentiments and emotions. So this can get rid of all those sentiments, emotions, let's kill each other, and let's fight. If we, if we raise our children at home on the basis of this understanding, they will go anywhere in the world and rule. If an average Nigerian begins to understand that this is what I need, if that is all you do for your child, you are all set. Why am I saying that? Anybody that seeks information objectively will always find the truth. That's why I said, if you, if you train your child in the heart of analytical thinking and they use that mindset to study the Bible, <laughs> right? They don't even need to preach to them. <laughs> the Holy Spirit knows how to take it. The reason it is difficult for people to come to God and give their life to God is because we have polluted them with wrong thinking and wrong mindset about God. You see, this is what Jesus was saying about the Pharisees. He said they will not come into the kingdom and they will not allow people to enter. Because of the wrong mindset and ideology, they were passing around as a result of their religiosity. 
This is very important. If it is not important, why will God say, come now and let us reason together? Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 18, he said, come, let us reason together. If you notice in, in verse 17, he said, learn to do well. Ha. Learn to do well. So those that are saying, thinking is not spiritual. How do you learn something? Can you learn something without your mind? You cannot. God is telling us, learn to do well. And how do we learn? By reasoning, by thinking, and reaching a decision that will manifest in you in form of action. He said, learn to do well. Then later he said, come now, let us reason together. So if we teach our children this, if the country adopt a mindset of reasoning and thinking things through instead of just using your emotion and responding to stimulus or to stimuli, instead of just reacting, I tell you, in a few years, a lot of things will be in order. If the church, let's say the church itself does this, more souls will be added to the body of Christ. <laughs> yes! Because it will begin to resonate with a lot of thinkers that have not taken time to, to study the Bible because they've been put up by behaviors of some Christians. <laughs> To begin to resonate with them. So this is you. You see. You see. This, I was talking about Daniel. You see, when they had a problem, when the king had a dream, and I said, I want somebody to tell me the dream and give me the interpretation. And he said, If you guys cannot tell me, you wise men, I'm going to kill all of you. When Daniel heard it. Did you see how he responded <laughs> to Harriok? He said, well, can you give us some time? He did not, not, he did not get emotional. He, did not, he said, can you give us some time? He said, okay. What did he do? He consulted with the others. They prayed about it. And then, when he got the revelation, did you see what he said? When he was praising God, I think that is in, uh, in chapter, when he was praising God, he said, God is the source of all light. What do you think light is? Hmm. <laughs> what do we think light is? Hmm. Light is information. Is information is correct information, correct, pure, unadulterated information. That is why when somebody knows something, you will say it has been what enlightened. Because the light has shone on him to reveal what did he didn't know. And this is why God said, He said, Call upon me in the day of trouble. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Hmm. Because the reason you were in trouble is because, because you did not know stuff. Hmm. So this economic crisis that we have now, and all the backwardness in Africa, the ability to think and research could just uh, resolve it. That is it. It will. If it works, Listen, in the Western world, people don't go to church as much as they do in Nigeria. They just do research. 
And we know the reason they got to this point is because of the light of the word of God they have at a certain point in their history. Because we know that all the development in the world came as a result of people that were enlightened by the word of God. We can trace that. So, he, now, even many of them don't go to church. We are depending on them. We that go to church in Nigeria spend seven days in church. But we don't use our mind. We are, but we, we don't go to church. We, don't, we use. don't use our mind. So, when you're talking about economic problem, economic problem is not isolated from the fact that we do not use our mind. Once we start using our mind, what once we start thinking objectively, but just praying all those economic praying for economic because last week, I think it was not last week, just Sunday, they just had all the GOs of the country gathered together, headed by Deboye. And they were having national prayer for Nigeria economy to recover and poverty to be resolved. It won't do a thing. It won't do a thing. The reason it won't do a thing is this. Because as far as I'm 50 years old now, but as far as I know, every day of my life, people have been praying. So what happened? It won't. Because it is wrong. You see, we cannot use... People don't understand God. They think we can use prayer to move God. No. If you pray... And your prayer is not in line with the principles that God has put in place. The principle that governs this known universe, this physical world, He will not answer it. Take for example, I am a farmer, and I live in a farming community. I planted cotton, and there's another farmer on the other side, just next to me. In his own farm, he planted, uh, let's say, corn or tomato. And then it did not rain. Right? And I am praying, the one that plant, planted corn is praying, God, I want it to rain, I want it to rain. The one that planted cotton is near, is near, is near harvest, is praying. God, I don't want it to rain because the cotton needs to be harvested dry. So is God going to take side? Both of them are Christians. Is God going to take side? They planted this thing at the same time. Is God going to take side? No! Why will you send rain to help the one that planted corn and the one that planted cotton all his crop will be destroyed? <laughs> they are both his children. Oh, or do you want to say, oh, because I serve you more, I do better? No. But what is the solution there? Everyone will plant their crop at the appropriate time of the year. There is a dry season that benefits the harvest of cotton. There is a rainy rain, rain season that benefits the harvest of corn. So if you don't follow those principles, your player is useless. Your prayer is useless. So this is what they are doing in Nigeria. You pray to God to solve a problem that God has already given us insight in his world how to solve. So if we start thinking and align our thinking in the right the way the word of God truly says, not the way they are teaching, all those economic problems, we will know how to take up and we know how to solve it. So that is not going to help anything. I will give another example. This is from the Bible. So for those that are very spiritual, since it's from the Bible, maybe they will relate with it more. Moses. Exodus. Chapter 24. I mean, Exodus chapter 4. From verse 20, Moses had an encounter with God when God called him. God told him, you know, go liberate my children from Israel and everything. Okay, the Bible said that Moses was, was with his wife and they were on their way. 
There is a strange place here, a very strange place. I think it's in verse 25. The Bible said, God was seeking to kill Moses. God is a God of principle. We have to get this thing. We, he created us to live by principles. And to live by principles is to think. God, the Bible said, God sought to kill him. Oh, many people still don't understand what was going on there. <laughs> People wonder why would God want to kill him? He just sent him on a get, you know, sent him on a mission. He want to kill him. But we see the way Moses' wife, Zipporah, reacted. What did she do? She took the baby, circumcised the baby, and threw the flesh on Moses' feet. And the Bible said God stopped from killing Moses. Then Zipporah said, "You are a bloody husband." A bloody husband thou art to me. What does that mean? Why was God going to kill Moses was supposed to circumcise his first son based on the covenant. Principle that God has laid down for them. But he did not do it. The fact that God gave him an assignment doesn't exclude him from doing it. The fact that he saw the bunny bush. The fact that God gave him a rod. God already told him you're going to do science and wonder in Egypt that nobody can stop you. Did not stop God. Why? Because God will not violate his own principle because you are praying. So they can pray all they want unless we align our life according to the principle of the information that God has set in place. Nothing will change. And why did the wife quickly? Maybe Moses has been telling his wife. We need to circumcise. But those people, they, they didn't circumcise. She didn't like the idea at all. No, I'm not going to cut my son. You, you, you know women, emotion. I'm not going to cut my son. Moses said, listen, you cannot, like, I'm not going to, okay, if you don't do it, God is going to kill me. When, he, when she saw he was, he was, he was going to die, he was going to die. God don't joke around. God don't play around. He says it, it is the way it is. It, it, it is the way it is. If you pray and your prayer is not in line with his principles, nothing happens. So God is not nothing the God is not the respecter of persons, it's the respecter of principles. No, it's not respecter of, no, respect of person. That was why she quickly cut that foreskin and threw it at the feet of Moses. That blood was shed there, and God left him. Next why time. also yes, go ahead. Moses is the man of the house, right? He's supposed to be able to 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 to, to carry it out, but he didn't. So he was responsible, and God held him responsible. We are going so, to Nigeria. Yes, go ahead. I was say so. So Nigeria, those people that think they are leaders of the church, there, yeah, not until they repent and take responsibilities for the errors they have perpetrated, nothing will change in the church. Nothing will change in the country. <laughs> Okay, thank you so very much. It has been an exciting journey, but what our people don't know who are watching us is that we have not even started the principles themselves. So, <laughs> <laughs> these are just the appetizer to the principles of analytical thinking. So, we are going to meet, we are going to continue. Please let me tell Julie to reschedule for whenever uh, Asano is ready. So we, are, we have not even started the principles. So from next time, we will start from principles of analytical thinking and then we'll go one by one because the principles, the steps are very exciting. Each one of them. Yeah, I love. Yeah, I love. <laughs> so before, yeah, I love. before then though, I want to tell all the people who are watching us that the topic we are reviewing is the art of thinking or the the analytical, or just the, you know, the thinking series, the thinking series or the art of thinking. So that's what we are doing. That's what we have been handling. And uh, Osaro has been doing an excellent, exceptional job. And like I said, we, are we have to continue next week because now in 20 minutes time, we have to come on for the next program. But before we go, I want to also say that I've written a book, just one book yet on shallow-mindedness. Read yourself 
of shallow mindedness is called. You can get that. It might help you because you can read and see them and analyze and do that. So, you know, you can get that on Amazon or read it for free if you are on Kindle Unlimited. But uh, what I want to say is, what will you, uh, Osaro, what will Osaro tell the people who are watching now who have not listened to the uh, thinking series, to the Art of Thinking series? This thing, they have not touched it or they are afraid to even touch it because it's too difficult. What will you tell the people who are watching about this series? Is it, you know, yeah, what will you say? What I would say is it is it is worth listening to. It is it is worth it. And um, when you listen, take your time. Take your time. I mean, this thing took DSS a long time to develop. So just take your time. I am still listening to it. I have not finished it. There's still a lot of things there that I still need to assimilate and apply to myself. So take your time to listen. I will encourage you to listen because it's really going to benefit you. It's going, it's, going to, it's going to open up a lot of areas in your life that you probably have been putting off unconsciously because you don't want to deal with it. Uh, 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 because, you know, we've been, you know, you've been assuming that uh, it is okay if I don't uh, look into it or, or deal with it. It's going to challenge you. It is good to be challenged. I will encourage you to make the time to listen to do it and don't do it in a hurry, do it gradually. You know, just just meditate upon it, listen to it very well, and uh, I'm sure it will be a great blessing to you. It has been a blessing to me. I mean, uh, I've learned a lot from listening to 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 to, to it, and uh, I'm sure it will be serious blessing to your life and to the life of whoever you will relate it with by the time you grab what is in there. So I really would encourage everybody to please listen to it. We need it. We need this type of te teaching. It is it is important because it is it is it's not following the status quo. This has completely shattered the status quo of preaching in the churches, you know, and in different gardens. You know, this will make you look at things from a different paradigm. It will really enable you, you know, to understand a lot of things about the human psyche. Too. That is very important in how we relate with people, with God, with our environment, and those are the things that determines our productivity in life. I really encourage everybody to listen to it. Really. Well, that is Osaro. It's his first time. It's going to be a regular guest here by the grace of God. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank All you. right. Thank you, Thank everybody, you. for being Thank here you. with us. We will see you in Thank the next 20 minutes. So, thank you. We'll continue the love series in 20 minutes. God bless. Bye.